for that in just a moment. Well, when we think about Mother's Day, we think about our kids, what a blessing it is to see your children serve the Lord. The little boy was a part of the Sunday school play or the presentation. And uh, while uh, he was giving, getting ready to give his part, uh, he stumbled and he forgot what he was to say. And mom, you know what that's like. And so the mother sitting on the front row, then she's gesturing to him and whispering to him what his next line was to be. But he just looked at her. He couldn't understand. And so finally she got up and she spoke into his ears these words of, I am the light of the world. And so all smiles and he reared that head back, you know, with boldness. He cried out, says, my mother is the light of the world. (laughs) And so as we think about all of these moms, you are the light. There's no question about it. And uh, you're such a blessing to us all. I cannot help but think on this day of my own mother, uh, who served the Lord faithfully and uh, lived to be 88 years old. And we miss her every day. And uh, Marcia's mother, both of them are in heaven with our dads. And uh, there's going to be a glad reunion one day. There's no question about it. Uh, But to our mothers that are part of Cranberry Church and to your mother specifically, uh, don't take it for granted. Uh, It goes by so quick. And uh, one day they'll be gone. And uh, you need to let them know now uh, that you love them. And uh, we thank you again for being here, a part of this service uh, this morning. Matthew chapter 15. I think I said maybe seven a little while ago, but... We'll turn there a little bit later, but Matthew chapter 15 is what we're reading from uh, this morning. As we find in this uh, passage of Scripture in the preceding chapter, uh, the Lord is withdrawing Himself from the Jews. Uh, You'll see that the Jews had rejected the Lord over and over again. And now for the first time in the Gospels, we find that Jesus is leaving uh, the land of Israel And he's headed toward the Mediterranean Sea. And there on the coast of the sea, he comes to the little community called Tyre and Sidon. These cities uh, were later destroyed uh, because of their unbelief. Uh, But as he makes his way, I want you to realize this, uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ, he's leaving Israel uh, to go to this territory that had rejected over and over again, never thought they could be worthy of salvation to the Gentiles. And keep in mind that the Bible does remind us that he was to go to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. But the Greeks or the Gentiles, they were considered by the Jews as dogs. They were lower class. As you read this text, you'll find that this is a very degrading term that they use. But we understand that the Lord included the Greeks, the Gentiles, when He died on Calvary's cross. It was not just for the Jews. But after they had rejected over and over again, the Lord makes His way to Tyre and Sidon. And there He gives them the gospel. And thank the Lord, as you understand what takes place, that they too come to know Christ as their Savior. You see, the Jews were holding so tight to Uh, their traditions. Uh, They were arguing about what needed to happen regarding washing their hands and all of this. And it was all about the external rather than the truth. Would you write this down? That traditions are external, but the truth is internal. Sometime, if we're not careful, we get caught up in tradition. We get caught up in just the fact that we've always done it that way. But that doesn't mean that it's scripturally correct, even what we do at times. Sometimes we get so caught up in what people do rather than who they know. And may I say quickly that tradition is superficial. But the truth, it penetrates the heart. The truth that lives inside of us changes us. And as we look at this passage of scripture, we'll pick up in verse number 21 we find that the Lord Jesus Christ makes His way into Tyre and Sidon. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. 
Now behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. I would like for you to underscore, if you would please, in this passage of Scripture. The phrase, as we see it clearly, when he says, O woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. We get so caught up on things that we think are right. This is what was happening here. And many times we find our own convictions that are developed over the years that is coming directly from God's Word, but sometimes those are personal preferences rather than just convictions. It's an interesting thought, not for this morning, but it is an interesting thought when you think about it. But here we find that we need to, everything that we do needs to come from the heart. You'll find here that the Lord is saying to these Jews, I desire that you serve me from the heart, that it not just be lip service, that it not just be, again, open or superficial. And may I say, everything that we do, we believe from the heart, do we not? We believe with our heart. The Bible says that if thou will believe in thy heart and confess with thy mouth, thou shalt be saved. We love from our heart. We sing from our heart. And may I say we give even from our heart. So should we not obey from our heart? This is what he's saying. We must obey the Lord and it should come again from our heart. I'm not talking about the law or traditions or, or of man, but that we would be like David. And David prayed, he said, create in me, he says, O God, a what? A clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, within my heart. And my question to all of us this morning, is your heart right with God? Have you found yourself, even as a Christian, drifting away on things that you think need to happen in everyone's life rather than looking at individuals and recognizing that they too need the Savior. I'm glad the Lord Jesus Christ had someone cross my path one day as an 18-year-old boy and tell me what I needed to have in my life, what I needed for my life, and how I could trust Christ as my Savior. Aren't you? Aren't you thankful for the day that someone told you about the Savior? And so David says again, create in me a clean heart, O God. After making this statement that sin comes from the heart, Jesus immediately then withdraws himself from the Jews and he makes himself available to this Gentile woman, someone again that really needed the Lord. And you'll see it as we read here in our text. And you'll notice his response. And he says in verse number 28, great is thy faith. Thank God for godly women. Thank God for the ladies in this room. Some, most are mothers, some may not be, but thank God for every woman like this woman that placed her faith, recognized what she needed. And he says to her in this text, great is thy faith. Can it be said of you? Can it be said of you, mom, great is thy faith. We think about those Oh, in the Old Testament, we go all the way back and there we find Sarah that had great faith. The Bible reminds us that through faith that Sarah received strength to conceive and to deliver a child when she was past age. Hebrews 11, 11 says, because she judged him faithful. Remember Rahab, the harlot of Jericho, and she hid the men 
there that were, were coming against the enemy. By faith she trusted the Lord in Joshua chapter 2. Reminded that Ruth, a woman who demonstrated great faith and dependence upon the Lord. Hannah, who was without child, barren. And pray specifically not just for a child, but for a man child. You think about the women throughout the Word of God, and may I say, they have a vital part in this 21st century as well. We're reminded of Hannah, of great courage, and and prayed for deliverance. We think about Mary, who was trusted with the messenger, spoke to her that as a virgin she would bear a child, and that child would be the very Son of God. We think about Hannah, the prophetess, a widow for 84 years, prayed, fasted for redemption. We pray about, the, we think about the Samaritan woman and that the Lord met her there drawing water with nothing to take water back. But she was to receive something that she never thought about until that hour. What did she do? By faith she accepted Christ and then she runs into the city and says, Come see a man who told me all things. Her life was changed forever. We think about Mary and Martha. Do you remember Martha was all cumbered about, caring for the Lord? No doubt she desired to do for the Lord, but Mary is just sitting there worshiping the Lord. And may we find ourselves not getting so busy working for the Lord that we fail to do as Mary of worshiping the Lord by faith. Mary Magdalene she was a recipient of God's grace. God cast out seven devils. We think about Lydia. In Acts chapter 16, you'll be reminded that revival took place because she simply opened her heart, received Christ as her Savior, was baptized that very day, and then she opened her home, and we find the church that is there, oh, all because of the, she trusted the Lord. May I say, she opened her heart. Great, he says, is thy faith. Great is thy faith. I want you to notice, first of all, in verse 22, This lady's difficulties that she had in life. We could go around the room. We could all talk about things that are going on in our own lives. We could talk about our difficulties. We could talk about our problems in our world or in our home or in our community. We could talk about all of those things. But notice in verse number 22 of this text. And the Bible says, Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. What's the problem? My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She's been possessed by the devil, grievously vexed with this unclean spirit. And she cries out to the Lord. I want you to know there's nothing too hard for God. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. doesn't matter what problems you've had. doesn't matter what problems you're in now. God is able to deliver. Obviously, this woman had testified and had seen others that had been delivered. She cried out to God. The Jews weren't happy about it. But we find that she comes to the Lord. She was very conscious of her own heritage. She was conscious that she was a woman. She was not just a woman, but she was a Canaanite woman. She was a Gentile. She was Greek. May I say, she was not one that would be accepted. And yet God says to her, as he answers her, first of all, in verse 27, she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And then he simply says, he answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee. As thou wilt. What she had prayed for, he answered. And the Bible says, And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She made a great decision. Oh yeah, she had lots of difficulties, but she made a decision. May I encourage every person in this room, not just the mothers, not just the ladies, but for every person under the sound of my voice to make that decision to realize that all of us are lost. And all of us are headed to a Christless eternity without knowing Christ as our Savior. I pray today that you'll make a decision. She made a decision, and the Bible says again that she came out. She fell at his feet, Mark chapter 7 reminds us. We see that in her decision that with confidence she cried out to him. And she just begged him and said, have mercy on me. Do you know Christ today is your Savior? Are you trusting Him completely? 
Do you know that if you were to die right now, that heaven would be your home? You cannot earn salvation. We're not saved by what we do. We're saved by what Christ has done for us. And she just simply cried out for mercy. She said, have mercy on me. She was unworthy. May I say she felt undeserving. She was a Gentile. She was not a Jew. She would be condemned. But may I say in her confidence she just simply cried out. And that's what all must do. Have mercy upon me for I am a sinner. She addressed him properly. And she called him Lord. She recognized who he was. And she called out to him and cried the truth, Lord. And yet the dogs eat of the crumbs. And she says, Lord, I'm trusting you. And she did. Notice, would you please, you read this passage of Scripture. In verse number 23, we see her discouragement. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Others will try to deter you. Others will try to keep you from coming to Christ. But you get your eyes off of man. You get your eyes off of others. And you get your eyes upon the Lord. And no doubt, in this crowd of people today, someone has hurt you. Someone has done something to, to harm you, to live a Christian life. Maybe there's one in this room today that you've just played the, the game and you just went a, along with what was going on at the church, but you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. May you turn to the Lord. But then there's others, no doubt, that have been so discouraged or been distracted. They've been on some detour because they've seen so much junk out of Christianity out of people who claim the name of Christ. And this woman, no doubt, in her discouragement, and could have just went away. But may I say, he didn't ignore her. He knew who she was. He said to her, notice in this text, though, that when, he, when she came, he didn't answer her. And, but we see it in this passage of Scripture. Why not? And he answered her not in verse 23. A word and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Oh, the Lord was proving her faith. And she was truthful with what she was trying to get to the Savior, to have her daughter delivered. A woman of great faith. And no matter what your problem is in your life, no matter what you're going through, may your faith be increased. May your faith be strengthened, knowing that nothing is impossible with God. Would you say amen? Nothing is impossible with God. And God is able uh, to meet every need according to His perfect will. I want you to turn, would you please, to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2. On oh, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. And here in this text, we're down to verse number, number 11. Wherefore remember that you being in times past Gentiles in flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. It is true. The Bible says he came to the Jew first, but also to the Greeks. I'm glad that included us. Amen. I'm not a Jew. Thank God that he can save a Jew. But they had rejected him over and over again. Now this woman is coming. The Jews are standing by. How is that possible? But may I say he came for all. It doesn't matter the nationality. It doesn't matter about the race. It doesn't matter about your background. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. This woman, no doubt, was discouraged along the way, not knowing what would take place, but she was so desperate. What was her desperation? What was caused her to come to the Lord? It was her daughter. And maybe you have someone that you're concerned about. Someone that needs a touch of the healing hand of God. Someone who's in trouble. Someone who is wayward. Someone who is going the wrong direction. I want you to know God has the answer. God is the answer. As she made her way to the Lord and the Lord recognized through all the opposition, through all of the discouragement, through all of the distraction, through all of the barriers that were there, He said, great is thy faith. 
It didn't matter what she was called. It didn't matter how others tried to, to put up a barrier for her to get to the Lord. And she came to the Lord and she just cried out to Him. I want you to know God wants to do something in all of our lives. As you read this passage of Scripture, notice what happens. Then came she and worshipped Him saying, Lord, help me. In desperation, she cries out and says, help me. The disciples said, send her away. You see, that seemed to be the solution for all of the disciples. Remember when the 5,000 were to be fed? And there was only a packed lunch of a little boy. That was all that was there. What was the response? Send them away. Let them go home to eat. Oh, but the Lord did a miracle on that day. Amen. As you notice here, this is a greater miracle. That one would trust Christ as their Savior. The little girl would be healed, no question about it. But they said, send her away. She crieth, answered. She crieth after us. And the Bible says, but he answered. He answered. And may we keep it in mind, God will answer. You have not because you ask not. You may be a Christian, but things are troubling you. Maybe you've been going through a time of discouragement. Maybe you've been going through a, even through a time of depression. Something's not right in your life. Maybe it's a physical need. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a, a physical need for sure or a financial need. But may I say, it all starts with the spiritual. Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things, all these things shall be added unto you. Oh no, you don't come to the Lord just to get. But may I say, when you come and give Him your life, then you've gained everything. And God will supply your needs according to His riches and glory. God is able to meet every need that you have, but the most important need that we all have is a spiritual need. No doubt I'm looking today across this congregation that most in this room, I would say the great majority in this room, know Christ as your Savior. But should there be one that does not know Christ, today is the time to come. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation that you would turn to the Lord. But could it be that there's a Christian that has gone wayward? Someone that has drifted away from the Lord. You're not as close as you used to be. And may I say, if we walk in the light as He is in the light, the Bible says we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, what does it say? Cleanseth us from all sin. Cleanseth that ETH is a reminder that it's a continual process that the Lord is always cleansing us of all sin as we confess our sin to Him. We see her determination in verse number 25. Or we see the difficulties that are there. How is she going to press through the crowd? Uh, she not being a, she being not a Jew and not a Gentile, uh, there's a barrier there. How is she going to get through all of that? But she made a decision. I trust today that you've made a decision. May we all be as Joshua. He said, for as, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And to every mother in this room, it ought to start with mom and dad. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so we find that she made a decision to come to the Lord. And she no doubt could have went away when the Lord seemingly was ignoring her. And the disciples were fussing about her being there. Was she discouraged? But through all of that, there was a greater need. What was the greater need? Her child. Her child. I promise you in this room that all of us who have children would do anything in the world for our child. Anything in the world for our child. If we saw them in trouble, we had put our life in danger to save our own child. Oh, we may forget them every now and then and leave them at the school and those kind of things, but we still love you. <laughs> oh, there's so many stories that we could give you, and there's stories that are floating around this morning that I just heard as I was passing by, but at any rate, even though we may not be the best at times, and to my children, I've had to say sorry many times. But I want you to know they know I love them. And to our grandchildren, they know I love them. This woman, she had that love. She had such a love that she was going to get her child. She was going to get her child to the master, the one who could give healing. That was her motive. But there was a deeper need. There was something else that she needed. And we see this determination when she cries out, Lord, help me. <laughs> she 
did not try to appease him. And she did not try to impress him. She did not try to, uh, to give some acknowledgement to say, hey, here's who I am. No, she's just simply saying, I'm nothing. She even said, I'm a dog. We're considered the dogs. We're considered the dogs, but may I say the dogs deserve some crumbs. This is what she's saying. I'll just take the crumbs. Uh, she was not of the, of the heritage, of the lineage, and no, no root. And not a root in Abraham. We see her confession in this determination. And then we see the con- consequences here. He said to his disciples, I have other sheep not of this fold. And Jesus said to her, great is thy faith. I like this last part. When he says, not only great is thy faith, but he also says, her daughter was made whole on that very hour, that very day. Uh, To every mother in this room, every mother in this room, it doesn't matter what the finances are. It doesn't matter about the education. It doesn't matter about the popularity. What matters is, mom, do you know Christ is your savior? Your children are following you. Dad, your children are following you. They're watching you. Where are you placing the emphasis in your life? And may I say to every mother in this room, would you write these three or four thoughts down and then I'm done. God wants you to be a godly mother to your children. A godly mother, would you write it down, will be concerned about the salvation of their child. A godly mother will be concerned about the salvation of her child. A godly mother will be consistent in her walk with the Lord. I've heard Dr. Sexton say it more than one time and others say it as well, that more is caught than it is ever taught. More is caught than is taught. A godly mother will be consistent in her walk with the Lord. Thirdly, a godly mother will have some convictions based upon the Word of God. Convictions based upon the Word of God. I don't know, I think we could take a poll very quickly and and ask the question, but have your children ever said to you, why? They wanted to do something. Mom and dad says, no, I don't think so. But why? You know, it may be about a TV program. It may be about renting some movie or about going to some activity. Or someplace, something they wanted to do. And would just simply say, but why? We should have an answer. We should have an answer. And it should not be this one. <clears throat> because I said so. <laughs> How many vote on that one? Yeah. Because I said so. That's it. No, it should be based upon some godly principle. Based upon the word of God. A godly mother should not only be concerned, consistent, and have convictions based upon the Word of God, but a godly mother needs to be committed to the training of her child regarding spiritual matters. Regarding spiritual matters. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So many wonderful thoughts I have about my mother. He's with the Lord. And sometime, even after I was grown and had children of my own, mother living by herself, daddy in heaven, I had a key to the house. I would go into the house, and I could hear mother back in the back, a little sun porch with her Bible open, and just singing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, or oh, how I love Jesus. Nobody else there but my mom. And it was just so sweet. And sometimes I would just stand there and just listen to her. I'd like to hear her again. I really would. You think about those precious times that you had. And, and you think just for a moment, well, that's sweet. But it's more than just being sweet. It's an impact on your life. Being consistent. Being committed to training the child regarding spiritual matters. A godly mother his confidence is not in her ability or her experience, but the Lord. And a godly mother, indeed, is the completer of the home. I hope you got all of these. She's concerned about the salvation of her child or children. She's consistent in her walk with the Lord. 
She has convictions based upon the Word of God. She's committed uh, to training her child regarding spiritual matters. Her confidence is not in her own ability or her experience, but her trust is in the Lord. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. And a godly mother indeed is a completer of a home. I thank God for my mother. I thank God for my mother-in-law. I thank God for my dear wife, who is the completer of a home. And I thank God for all of the mothers in this room who make up our church family. You're a completer, not just in the home, but in the church. This coming Tuesday night, the ladies will gather for their Bible study around the Word of God. I want you to know that says something, that our strength, our confidence is not in ourself. It's not about all of the activities. It's about the Word of God. It needs to be centered around the Word of God, as does every home. As you read this passage of Scripture, you'll see it clearly. She's actually not arguing with the Lord, but she's just saying, it's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She came humble to the Lord, undeserving. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, whole woman, Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Great is thy faith. Let's stand, would you please? Father, we thank you today for the word of God. Thank you for this reminder of this undeserving yet helpless lady had a great need, not just for her child, but for herself. And Lord, I'm thankful that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But it begins with our faith. <clears throat> faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by of the Word of God.